Hi everyone, I'm John Glasscock, and this is a cheesy intro slide. Welcome to another video. Hope that you all are doing fantastic on this wonderful Tuesday afternoon of December. This is going to be a video documenting, is that even a word? Documenting my best practices and tips on how to optimize your ISP gateway for gaming. I've been getting a lot of requests in my comment section over this specific topic. So today I'm gonna to go in depth on how to configure hardware setups for gateway internet connections. So most of you all who are watching this video have probably seen one of these uh, types of devices before. This is an internet service provider gateway. And these are some examples here as pictures down below as you all can see. And most people that I've talked to um, have kind of a negative opinion about these devices because they lack very little um, in settings. Like they have very minimal settings that you can change and they also have poor overall routing and Wi-Fi performance. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple workarounds today if you all play multiplayer games and you want settings such as QoS, I'm gonna show you guys workarounds on how to obtain QoS because in my opinion, quality of service or QoS is the most important thing that you can set up to get the best online multiplayer connection on your home network. It's something that you actually have control over and that you can implement to get a better multiplayer experience. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now let's clear the air here about this real quick. This is a gateway and this is a cable modem. They are very different because a cable modem serves specifically just to be a point of entry for your coax cable or for your DSL, um, your DSL line, and it doesn't have any routing router functionalities. Now, a gateway, on the other hand, serves as a two-in-one. So it not only connects your um, or receives your connection via DSL or fiber or cable, it also acts as a router. So it offers Wi-Fi connectivity, and it also offers... Uh, LAN connection capabilities you all can see here. So if you wanna know and get just straight down to it and know the difference, if you look at the back of your piece of equipment, if it has these ports, it's probably a gateway. If it only has one ethernet port, then it's probably a cable or DSL modem. All right. Now let's get into a really big mistake that I see a lot of people doing is they don't necessarily like their cable modem, or excuse me, they don't like their gateway that their internet service provider is providing them, so they think that they can get better performance by simply connecting a third-party router straight up to their gateway and just using this as their router. And this is a big no-no because this can cause a lot of issues. You have two DHCP or NAT-enabled devices trying to assign IP addresses. They both have firewalls and they both are Wi-Fi enabled, and this just doesn't make sense. This is gonna cause what is called double NAT, and it's gonna severely impede on your uh, network throughput. So I do not recommend this type of setup. Now, the first thing that I kind of recommend everybody to do is if you have a internet provider that makes you use a gateway, ask them and give them a call and see if you're actually able to use your own equipment. Because if you can switch from a gateway to a DSL or cable modem that is just a standalone modem, then I highly recommend that you do this because this does not cause double NAT because you only have one NAT enabled or DHCP enabled uh, network device assigning IP addresses on your home network. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, yes, you can go into the settings and disable DHCP on this specific device and just have one device using DHCP if you have a gateway, but it, it gets too complex and it's much easier to just do this if you can, trust me. And most of the people that watch my channel, they're not necessarily the most technically inclined, so I always try to break it down as simple as I can just so that why uh, it makes sense to everybody watching. All right. So one of the remedies that you can use for a gateway connection that you are not able to use your own equipment is to use what is called a managed switch. And this is personally what I use. I have AT&T DSL fiber and they force me to use their gateway and I have no other option to uh, use my own equipment. So as you all can see, what I have done with my home network is connected a managed switch, which has no DHC capability, DHCP capability. It simply just takes the IP addresses and it forwards them to any device that is connected on the home network. All right, so this is how I have my setup for um, my online multiplayer connection in my 
personal network here is to number one on my pace 52688 AC, that's what it's called or your gateway you're going to want to first of all disable wi-fi and i'll explain that later here in a minute you're going to want to disconnect all LAN cables except for your managed switch that you choose this is the uh, netgear s8000 it's probably my favorite switch that i have used and that i've tested it's designed specifically for gaming and it's very easy to set up so i always recommend it to people looking for a good switch um, you're going to want to leave DHCP enabled on your gateway. You're going to want to leave the firewall enabled, and you're going to want to use uh, port forwarding or UPnP here on your gateway. So essentially, your gateway is still going to be handling the IP address assignment. It's still going to be handling the port forwarding or the UPnP capability, but the QoS or the quality of service traffic management is going to be handled on the switch, and I'm going to get more into that here in a second. All right, so this is what my full setup looks like is you have your um, gateway assigning IP addresses and forwarding ports. You have your switch using QoS or handling the traffic. And then we have our PlayStation 4 or our device that we are using for gaming set to high priority. We have our uh, AP or our access point set to low priority and our computer, which we use for you know everything else set to low priority as well. So the switch uses what is called port managed QoS. So it essentially uses port based QoS. It doesn't use IP or MAC address QoS. Hopefully that makes sense. So you can set like, for instance, port seven to high priority, point six to low priority, port five to low priority or medium, high, medium. You can go and log into the switch and change what priority you want for each uh, port, which is really nice. So. We have the port that our PlayStation 4 is plugged into set to high priority, and that is really the most important thing. So this is going to ensure that our PlayStation 4 does not suffer from any lag, any packet loss, or any kind of network problems while we are playing multiplayer games. All right. So moving along here, if you are a gamer that plays wireless uh, gaming, which I do not recommend, if you can use a LAN cable, I highly recommend it. This is kind of a similar, uh, but, a more, uh, but a more expensive setup for your home network. So you can use a switch and you can have a separate router in AP mode that handles all of the Wi-Fi devices on your home network. You're gonna wanna leave Wi-Fi disabled on your gateway, 100% disabled, but you're gonna wanna have a separate router for all of the Wi-Fi devices on your home network that are not your gaming devices. You're gonna of course wanna have your, um, your PC connected through LAN cable at low priority as well, or you can actually connect it to your Wi-Fi access point that's set at low priority if you use Wi-Fi for your PC. And then you're gonna to wanna to connect a separate router that will handle all of your gaming devices. And you're gonna to wanna to change the QoS algorithm on your switch to set this uh, specific router as high priority. So essentially what this means is that any device that is connected to this router will automatically get high priority on your home network, i.e. your uh, gaming devices such as your PS4 or your Xbox. So those are essentially some of the best setups that I would recommend for people that have a gateway. I'm sure there are many different ways that you can do this, but this is probably the simplest and most straightforward way uh, to configure your hardware for gaming with a gateway. Leave any comments or questions down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them. But aside from that, hope that you all will subscribe. Please leave a like on this video and let me know what you all think. I will see you all on the next video. Peace.